In this video, we are going to install SQL Server 2019 and also SQL Server Management Studio. And after the two installations, we will do a database restore. Before we go ahead with the two different installations, let's see the hardware and the software requirements for SQL Server 2019. From uh, the uh, documentation here, you need about six gigs of uh, hard disk space and about four gigs of RAM. So I'll share the link in the description below so that you check the requirements in your computer to see if you are able to install SQL Server 2019. Now that we've covered the requirements, let's look at how to download uh, SQL Server Excel. So I'll share this link also in the description below. We are going to go with the SQL Server 2019 Developer Edition. From the um, description here, it's a full featured free edition for development and test. So we'll go with that uh, version. So click on the download button here. Pause that is downloading. Let's also go here and download. I'll share this uh, link as well in the description. Let's also download SQL Server Management Studio. Okay. Now we come back to our SQL Server Developer Edition. Now click on here, then click yes. Now we we can we can choose to go with the basic installation or the custom installation. I prefer to download the media so that I can share this uh, software on my other computers as well. So I'll go ahead and click on the media, download media, and I'll select either the, the image file or the compressed media. I'll go with this one here and then I'll hit download. However, I already have all, all of these uh, downloaded, so I wouldn't go ahead to download them. This is what I had clicked on and this is my compressed media files. Okay. After you hit on this download, you should see this file downloaded in your downloads okay so i'm going to go ahead and um hands or close this because i already have the developer edition downloaded like i showed so i'll close this out and i'll hit yes now i'm going to go into my folder where i have it downloaded and once you open this file the compressed media file it actually creates a new folder and extracts all the the necessary files into that folder it has about 11 items the file that we are interested in running is the setup. So right click on that. You can either run that as an administrative, um, sorry. You can either run that with administrative privileges or you can just open it. I'm going to run that with administrative privileges. It's not required, but it's okay to do that. So I'll click on that and I'll say yes. Okay, so actually let me minimize this one here. Let me minimize that. So over here we see planning, installation, maintenance tools, resources, advanced and options. Now with the planning, it gives you some links to some documentations, assuming you wanted to read about a few things. However, we'll go to the installation tab and then we'll click on the new SQL Server standalone installation. And it already has the developer edition specified, but if you want to change your mind and change the version, you are free to do so, but I want the free edition. So I'll go with developer edition. So I'll go next, accept the license terms and go next. So it's going to do some checks to determine if the, the laptop or the computer needs to be restarted or not. All right, so we have three uh, past checks and one warning. So basically, we just have to check our firewall settings and allow our um, SQL Server uh, port through the firewall. But this is on our personal computers and it is not actually required. So we would just go next on here. So this is the most important part of the installation, I believe. This is where you do your feature selection. Over here, we have the instance features and the shared features. Now the instance features only pertain to this particular installation we are doing. And the shared features pertains to all SQL Server, different uh, versions of SQL Server that is installed on your computer. For the purpose of this demo, we are going to stick to the database engine only. Assuming for the purpose of what we were installing it for, we needed some type of machine learning service, or data quality service, then you check all that. And as you click on that, you see the space required and then the description of the feature you selected. So over here, we're going to go with database engine. 
and uh, we'll select the full text um, semantic instructions for search. So these are the two features that I will select here from the, for, for the instance features. And then for the shared features, we'll go with our client tools connectivity and we'll go with integration services, assuming we wanted to schedule some jobs. And we'll go, to, uh, we'll go with the client tools SDK and probably add a SQL client connectivity SDK. So these are the features that we have selected so far. Now on here, because we are just installing this for development and test on our personal computers, we are not going to go with all the best practices in installing SQL Server. You'd want to change the directory of your installation from your operation system to and where you're installing SQL Server. That is the best practice. But we'll stick to the C drive and we'll go next. So the type of installation we are doing is the default instance because we currently do not have any version of SQL Server installed. And this name is the default name that Microsoft provides when you're installing the default instance. Okay, so we'll stick to that and we'll go next. For the service account setup, um, SQL Server Agent is where you um, schedule your jobs. So I would love that to be um, started automatically, okay? And for my SQL Server browser, maybe I would just set that to manual if I would need it. But for now, I would love my agent, my database engine, and integration services to be started automatically. And this is what I will leave it as. And I'll go next. Again, this installation is only for uh, development and test purposes. So we are not going to abide by most of the best practices in installing SQL Server on the production environment. So we are going to skip a few things. Now on the server configuration, we will go with a mixed mode. Now mixed mode combines the Windows authentication and SQL Server authentication. The differences are that this Windows authentication is this uh, would use your same user name and password that you had used to log onto your computer. Okay. And then the server authentic SQL Server authentication is going to give you access to use the SA or the system administrator account. So to use that, you have to uh, add a password. And repeat that. Over here too, you can add the current user also as an administrator. Now remember, adding the user here gives that particular user all the unrestricted access to the database engine, just like the SA account. But this is our personal computers and it's okay to do that. But on a typical production environment, you don't want to be adding any, just anybody, right? So I'll add myself here. That looks good. And again, we are not going by any best practice, so we won't change anything here. But typically, you change where your data is going, where your logs are going, and where your backups are going. And you also want to configure your temp DB. For now, we will only configure the memory. We will just select uh, the recommended choice that Microsoft has provided. And then I'll click Accept the recommended memory configurations, and then we'll move next. All right, so we are done with feature selection and we are ready to install SQL Server 2019. So we'll click on install. I may probably pause uh, the video whilst it's installing or maybe I'll skip through it fast. But regardless, I will, tell, I, will, I will tell you how long it took to install. All right, our installation appears to have completed successfully. All the features that we selected have uh, completed successfully, so I'll hit close. If you want to see the logs on how, uh, on all the processes or steps it took to complete this installation, you can click on this uh, text file here, it's in your C drive somewhere, but I'm gonna hit close. Now, the next thing we want to install is the SQL Server Management Studio, but we have already downloaded it, so we will click on this link again as well download it from here. It will take you to the website. So I'll go back to my folder because we already used, uh, downloaded that uh, file. So this is where I have mine stored. 
this is the file, the SQL Server Management Studio. So we're going to install that. But before then, let me just close out of this. So I'll right click on this one as well, and I'll run that as an admin. Again, you don't have to run it as admin. I prefer to do it that way. So we go yes, minimize that, and then we wait. So I'll click on install. So while that is installing at the background, we can go ahead and uh, go to the, uh, the link here. I'll share that in the description as well. We want to download AdventureWorks Data Warehouse and AdventureWorks Database. So this is the OLTP and we'll go with the 2019 backup file. So click on that to download. And then we can also download the AdventureWorks 2019 Data Warehouse. Okay. So we can also click on that as well to download. So whilst um, this management studio is installing, we can be downloading that as well. Those are the two files that we need. Again, I have those already um, downloaded. I call them database and they are both here in my folder. So I would actually, I would actually pause. Well, it's already done. Okay. So. All right, installation of the SQL Server Management Studio has also completed successfully. So we will hit close. And now, if we already have our data warehouses downloaded, then we are ready to restore. But before then, let's find the Management Studio we just installed. So type in SSMS in your search and uh, select the SQL Server Management Studio 18 app here. And let's see if it's working all right. Okay, so we have a SQL Server Management Studio opened and you see here the server name is your computer name. Whatever name you had given to your computer is what is going to show here. So right now it's set at the SQL Server Authentication mode, but we can click on the Windows Authentication mode and we do not have to enter a password because it is using the same login credentials we had used to log into the computer. So we can click Connect. nice again we can connect to the same database engine by doing this we can remove the computer name and we can type in localhost localhost and we can still connect to the engine okay and again we can connect without the local host we can just do a simple period a dot here and hit connect the period here also behaves like the local host and the local host is just your server name or your um, local computer. So these are the various ways that you can connect to the database engine. Now that we've seen how to connect to the database engine with the Windows authentication, let's just try to connect with um, the SQL Server authentication. So we go back here again and at the same uh, server name, we will change the authentication to SQL Server authentication. We'll type in the SA that was the username he gave us in the installation period and type in the password we had used. So let's try that and hit connect. Our installation of the SQL Server Management Studio was successful. Now let me disconnect this and let's toggle uh, the databases open. We realize that there are no databases here. So what we can do is that we can right click. If you already have the databases downloaded from the uh, github repository like i showed you here if you already have them downloaded come back here and click on um, restore database and then click on device then click on the ellipsis here then click on add now over here we do not see our database backup files because the the, the files are in our download folder but what we can do is that we can just copy this path here and go to our file explorer this is the quickest way to do this paste it here I'll continue okay 
Now, what I want to do is that I want to move the files in my downloads into this folder to make it easier for me to just restore. We can as well navigate to wherever we kept our downloads, but I think this is the easier way to do it. So I'm going to move, probably copy, yeah, move, move them here. Now that I did that, I can come back here and I have to refresh, click on this button here, and we should see the two files. All right. So now we click on the first one to restore. Now we click OK and then click OK here. We don't need to change anything. This is our very first um, restore, so we don't have to change any settings here. So we go back to general and we click OK. All right, restore has completed successfully and now we see a database here. We'll go ahead and restore the DW, the data warehouse database here. So we'll right click on the databases again, restore database, go back to device, ellipsis here. Click on add, select the data warehouse, click OK, click OK. And again, we don't have to make any changes here. We will just hit OK and we wait. Awesome. All right, so now we have two databases restored on our database engine. We have AdventureWorks 2019 and AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2019. Now we can see some tables in here which is looking good. We can also see some of the items in the data warehouse. These are some of the tables. So yeah. We have successfully installed SQL Server 2019, SQL Server Management Studio, and we have restored two databases.